This is our first session now on Ephesians 4, 7 to 10. And I simply want to focus on verse 7 and see if we can grasp the connection, especially between that verse and what has gone before. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So, Father, show us now crucial things as Paul shifts gears, it seems, from an entire focus on non-diverse unity to very diverse unity. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, but to each one of us comes as a kind of surprise, and yet this word one here, I think is a kind of word play. Let me show you what I think is going on. The emphasis in verses four through six falls very heavily, like seven times, on oneness. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. And so the heavy emphasis here is on one. There's one great reality. And the, the word one is not drawing attention to diversity. It's drawing attention to the single body, the, the single spirit, the single hope, single faith, single Lord, single baptism. And then here comes the next verse. But to each one. Each one. And that's the same word. And having been used seven times that way, I think this is intended by Paul to be a little bit of a shocker. In other words, he's going to shift gears now to say, okay, I have stressed that behind the unity of the body of Christ, Jew and Gentile, on equal footing before one God, through one Lord, by one Spirit, with one promise, <laughs> now I'm going to show you that that does not mean there is not an amazing diversity through which this oneness will be experienced and displayed to the world. And so he starts with, but to each one of us. So he's now shifted off of that huge vision of one Lord, one God, one faith onto every single Christian, thousands and thousands of them, now millions and millions of them, each one of us. And the question will be then, okay, if you're going to shift gears onto this amazing particularity and individuality of each Christian all over the world, in every church, what will be the means by which any hope for unity will be maintained? And just watch the words he uses. To each one of us, grace, grace was given. So the first thing he says about us is that we are marked by grace. Not desert, not merit, not anything that puffs up one against another, was given. Everything you're going to have that makes you different is a gift. He's going to say later on in another letter, what do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as though it's not a gift? According to the measure so there are different measures, yes. The eachness here and the each oneness implies there are very many, many differences. There are as many differences as there are people, but 
This measure is according to the measure of Christ's gift. So he underlines the giftness of the differences. And he says, and by the way, the one who's giving this grace is Christ. And there is one Lord. And that one Lord does not intend for his gifts to his people to shatter the oneness that's been established in chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. Now let's broaden out our lens and confirm whether we're on the right track or not. When he finishes way down in verse 16, here's what we read that is finishes this paragraph on diversity and oneness or oneness in diversity. This is a very difficult sentence. Very awkward, but there's a part of it you need to see, I think. From Christ, the whole body, joined and held together. So now he's been talking about the parts and the diversity. By every joint with which it is equipped, according to the working of each part in measure. Now, you don't see that in the ESV, and I retranslated this part right here so that I could bring out the exact wording that I think is important. According to the working of each part in measure, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And I draw that out because that's the word used here. And I think it's important because. I think it underlines the fact that the gift of Christ here is varying measures of grace given to each one. And this grace is not saving grace as if some are saved and some aren't, or some are half saved and some aren't, but rather this is grace upon grace by which we are able to be different in our gifting because the grace is the gift. Let's drop back to chapter 3, verse 7. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace. So Paul sees his own ministry and all that has gone into it to make him able to do his work, a gift of God's grace, just like he's describing now every saint having varied measures of gifts of grace. Or here we are, a very important parallel in Romans 3, or Romans 12, 3 and 6. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. So he's drawing attention again to the fact that he functions as a, an apostle by grace given to him, just like they have their graces. He has the grace of an apostle. So don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith. So that's one of the dimensions of the differences in grace, different measures of faith that God has assigned to each. And here in verse 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given. Same phrases as in chapter 4, verse 7. Let us use them. One more parallel. First Peter 4.10 As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. She have the same cluster of ideas God's grace, in chapter 4, verse 7, mediated through Christ, is poured out on us in great variety. We are to be stewards of this varied grace. And thus, the gifts we have received, each one of us used to serve. And that's why there will be unity in this diversity, because gifts of grace don't puff up above another. They put us under another so that we serve 
each other. So, the connection between verse 7 and verses 4 through 6 is that there, the word one fell heavily on one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. And here, the word one falls on each one of us. And what keeps this from blowing up with division and ruining the oneness of verses 4 through 6 is that it's grace that comes to us. It comes to us as a gift. The giver is Christ himself, and the measures that he gives are according to his great wisdom. So we take heart that even though there's enormous diversity in various measures of grace that come to each one of us. It is grace. It is gift. It is Christ. And therefore, there's going to be a great, beautiful, precious unity that he's going to describe in diversity.